<laughs> so it's almost as if we're talking to everyone out there. Okay. What do you want them to know about you? Well, I'm Julia, I'm 13, and I have Lyme disease, but um, I, don't, I don't let it define me. This is my dad, Enrico. Tell me about him. Um, well, I mean, we spend every day together. Uh, he's, be he's become my caregiver. Before I got sick, I was, like a, I was a singer, I was a dancer, I played softball, sports, I was in all my school clubs. She had every sign and symptom associated with Lyme disease. She had the risk and exposure factors, and they refused to even talk about Lyme. The biggest way it affected me is, you know, I can't walk, I am, you know, subject to the wheelchair. I, I don't have a lift in my home, so I can't get outside by myself. And I have steps to get out of my house. And um, these two, you know, carry me on their shoulder and bring me to the car when I have to go somewhere. Well, I want you to Sorry. know. No, you're fine. There's no, there's no shame in crying. It's an emotion everyone experiences. Mm -hmm. My heart breaks for them. That, you know, I suffer, but they have to suffer too because of my suffering. We're we're blood. You know, we're we're not only siblings, but we're friends. And you know, we have to stick up for each other in the darkest of times. And I don't see it as suffering. Any thought or feeling that might come up for me or that has to do with me or how I feel or what I have to go through, it just, it, it you know, it fades away. I don't, I don't consider it. And nobody could figure out what was wrong with her. And she was uh, losing everything. She wasn't able to move her arms. She wasn't able to move her legs. We weren't able to keep her awake for more than 10, 15 minutes a day. Without him, you know, I don't know what the doctors would have done with me. You know, he was the one who figured out it was Lyme disease. I never, you know, pictured myself going into high school in a wheelchair. And, you know, you know, I talk to Adam about it all the time, like, sorry. And I tell her too, you know, it's not a big deal that you're in a wheelchair. You know, I know, I know kids who are in a wheelchair in my high school. They're the most popular kids there, you know. Like she, it doesn't matter. People, uh, people are accepting. You know, it's not like people think it's, uh, something of the wheelchair. You know, it's people are very accepting of it. And she could be the most popular. She could be the light of the school. I think my one wish would be to walk again. To, um, you know, be a to walk, but not just walk and go back to where where I used to be. To walk and be a better person. We're gonna get through this, and you're gonna do everything you want to do. Your dreams are going to come true. This is going to just be something that you're going to chalk up as an experience that made you a stronger person. Yeah. I think so too.